My AOSTAR M2 enclosure arrived before my SSDs, but I thought I'd still open it up and give you a chance to have a look inside. So you can see I've already had a, a quick nosy at this. Um, so essentially it comes with a set of instructions uh, only in Chinese. Um, doesn't look like there's an English set, but uh, not that I got. Um, and the actual device uh, arrived quite well packaged. Um, it's, it's, got a, it's a nice, uh, got a reasonable weight to it, metal case. Um, uh, I like the look of the heat sinks, are um, visible through the side. And you'll see underneath is quite a large aperture for the fan. Um, so it'll be intriguing to hear uh, how that goes. Um, also in the box, um, I don't know if this is standard for everybody, but I got sent this uh, Y power connector. Um, it seems to imply on the website that this is only if you've already ordered uh, an AU Star Gem 10 or Gem 12. Uh, and the idea being that the one power adapter then can hopefully power both the enclosure and the mini PC. Um, I'm going to give this a go on the PC I'm planning to use this with, which is a Minis Forum MS01. And uh, I'm not sure if it's the same size barrel connector, but we'll definitely give that a try. So let's pop that over there. Um, there's a short Oculink connector. Uh, I don't yet have uh, a device to um, test that out with, but uh, I have ordered a uh, M.2 to Oculink uh, adapter uh, and I might try that in, a, in another mini PC as well so um, that provides some interesting possibilities and I'll come back to those. Um, and there seems to be quite a reasonable uh, USB 4 cable. Um, some decent quality. Uh, nice braided connectors uh, and is labelled as being 40 gigabits per second um, uh, and I guess if you've tried getting your head around the whole USB-C, USB 4 thing you're already trying to also work out um, speed of, uh, between gigabytes and gigabits um, that's a little bit disappointing that uh, I was supplied with a um, basically US style adapter and uh, um, one of the nastier looking uh, uh, travel adapters. Um, I wouldn't really want to trust my life to that so I might try and see if I can find something sturdier for now but um, yeah, no it doesn't really inspire confidence but um, the actual adapter itself looks reasonable quality and uh, has, um, uh, has uh, markings on the bottom. Um, and then just finally there's a collection of thermal pads and these go on top of the SSDs and um, allow them to transfer heat to the uh, case. So, uh, so I'll pop these things out of the way um, and we'll... Uh, We'll basically get the screws out and uh, have a look inside. Okay, so I've removed the first four screws, which are just at these corners. Um, there are two additional holes. I don't know what they're for. Um, I assume it's for mounting something else, but um, uh, maybe time will tell with that. Okay, now I'm going to carefully just lift the back because uh, I'm not sure if there's any cables or... No, the, uh, the actual fan enclosure um, is a separate thing. And actually looking at that, there are another four screws, just one, two, three, four, um, that I think I'll need to remove and then I should be able to see the M.2 slots. Okay. Now, there is just at the top here a, a small, I don't know if you can see it, small fan connector. 
I'm going to leave that attached actually just if I can. So, um, right, and uh, you can see that there's the four uh, M.2 slots. Um, it's actually an interesting label. There's HC SSD dock uh, version 0.2. Um, there are a few little unpopulated bits on the PCB, but it's nice to see that the um, the mounting screws for the SSDs are all uh, there in place. Um, and uh, yeah, there's nothing else that I immediately see that uh, that I can tell you about from the inside. Um, fairly sparse. Uh, I won't for now uh, take to get any further than that um, but uh, but yeah let's let's for now let's pop pop it back and uh, I'll pop the screws back in and then plug it in and we'll see what the fan sounds like okay I've put the screws back in the uh, fan enclosure uh, and just interestingly uh, all the screws are the same size size so it uh, that is quite useful. Uh, I thought it was going to be worth actually just plugging it in just to see if the fan does power up uh, given an idea of the initial noise. Yeah. So it's there. It's actually uh, not an unpleasant whine of a fan. Um, I'm sure with the case uh, it'll be better still. Okay, I'll pop the rest of it back on. Okay, got the screws back in, and uh, as you can see, it's um, it's quite a nice case. I've forgot to point out that it's got both the USB 4 um, and the whole confusion as to whether or not that's Thunderbolt or not. Um, let's put that to one side. Oculink, um, which um, if you think this is supposed to be a maximum of uh, 40 gigabits per second speed, Oculink goes up to 100 gigabits per second. Um, uh, but then of course out of the two of them then that's then divided between the four separate slots for the um, uh, M.2 drives and uh, so you then go from what would be PS, uh, PSIE 4 uh, down to what sounds like more like a PCIe 3 times 1 um, speed because of the Manufacturers say you start are talking about this being 800 megabytes per second per each M.2. Now th that is going to mean that you'd be able to saturate definitely the USB 4, but it's going to be interesting to see um, quite what happens if I do connect it with an Oculink. Um, but let me just uh, plug it in with the case on and give you an idea of the sound. So certainly um, at rest, not under load, um, that, that's great. It uh, seems quite quiet to me. I don't know how much it ramps up once uh, you've got the drive going, but it'll be interesting to see. Just, uh, I'll bring it nearer to the... Mics and... Um, yeah, it's always difficult to judge on the internet, but certainly um, that's almost at the level of background noise. So. Okay, hope this helps. Thank you.